Hey YouTube, welcome to part 2 of my front end loader build. In this episode I'm going to complete the keel to attach the front end loader to my tractor. And I just want to remind you that this keel is specific to my model of tractor. It may also fit a Sato buck, but it is designed for Mitsubishi 1550. Let's get on with the build. Well, to my great annoyance, I've found that it's not all that easy to cut 35 degree angles on this saw, or 55, actually, I think it was I was trying to cut. Because when you get it twisted around 55, it comes through the middle of one of these blocks. As you can see, the previous owners tried to do it and cut into his block. I don't want to do that, so I've decided that I'm going to cut this piece using the cutoff wheel on the small angle grinder. It's not that big a cut got full cuts to do so it's not that big a deal but it is a bit annoying because I like using the bandsaw ah, it's one of those hot old days if you didn't have a job you wanted to get done you wouldn't be working Okay, well there's the two braces in place on one of the assemblies. That's part 006 on the plans. This is the keel assembly that we're building and they fit on there like that. Got to weld them on there now. Okay, I've got the keel mounts mounted on the tractor for the moment. I'm putting in the reinforcing underneath and I'm going to use that to pull them back into alignment because they did pull out of alignment a little bit from the welding. It's all good and level this way, but this has pulled forward just a little bit on this end. Now, that can be compensated when I put the upright in, the keel post, but I'm going to try and pull it straight with the reinforcing anyway, and just see how that goes. Now you can just see the two braces in under there, they're not welded in properly but they've got a good solid tack on them. Now I did manage to pull this in straight, I pulled this back so that they're both sides are collinear and I did that with these. That's an extremely old clamp, I believe it dates back to probably around the war years. So that makes it 70, 80 years old. Invaluable, I use these things all the time. And that pulled that straight, so now, before I go any further, I'm going to put these extra braces in here, and I'm only going to weld the top side of them, but I'll weld them in properly, and then I'll pull it all off and finish welding it. Hopefully then there'll be no movement in it at all. That's got him lined up down the centre of the pipe. All right, I'll do the other side off camera. In the finish I decided that it's going to be better just to weld these up in place and then there's more than weld the other side so I'm going to finish these welds down here. About all the welding I can do in place. And I'll probably have to put him back in place to put the paste on. I've taken the keel back off and the plan now is to go around and finish all the wells that are only half done. I'll start by doing these down in here and then I'll put the braces on and then I'll go around and finish up the wells. 70, 18 right again. So I'm going to run at least three passes over these wells. I'll do that off camera and then I'll turn the camera back on when I start putting the braces in. Well, I did all the welding off camera because it was quite literally a lot of it and even on fast forward you would have got sick of looking at it. It's finished now. You can see I've got some satisfactory flux peel on some of the wells there. 
I'd have to say that the wheels aren't the prettiest, but I think they're strong enough to hold. I've seen professional wheels that aren't as pretty that still did the job. That one's a much better example. I'll just get some light around under that. There you go, that's a much better example of what I was trying to achieve. And I'm sure some of you will be able to do much better. Nevertheless, as long as it holds, that's good enough. It's all underneath the tractor. Anyone that gets underneath the tractor to examine the quality of the wells is being a bit rude anyway. There you have it, all the wells, everywhere there's a surface that can be welded, got welded. Uh, this is mainly under compression load through here, so probably could have got away with less welding, but didn't want to risk it. These elements here will be under some tension load, so I wanted a good weld up on the tops of them. Same with these particularly on the top because that's mainly where the tension load's going to be. These here will take some of the tension load here, not a lot because the vector's not great for it. This will take the backwards and forwards load, which given that it's a small tractor, shouldn't be terribly excessive, so I'm thinking that that'll do the job quite nicely. Anyway, there you have it. I've just got to put the uprights on that now, and that keel assembly is finished, and it can be painted and put on the tractor. I'm just marking out, cut out part 004, which is heel post stirrup. I want four of them, and we want four of the tower stirrups, part 015. And I've got this piece of 150mm by 16mm, which is 5 eighths by 6 inches near enough. I put four holes there, and I'll drill the four inch and a half, 38 millimetre holes through there. Then I'll cut through the middle of them there, and there, and down the middle that way. That'll give me eight pieces. The only difference between the two parts is part 015 has a corner chopped off of it. Otherwise, they're identical. Well, there we are. I did the four holes off camera. They're 38 mil, which is near enough to the 38.1 mil, which is an inch and a half. So now I've just got to cut him across the centre of the holes there, across here, across the centre of the holes here and across there and then split it down the middle and I will have my eight parts. Now I've got two of the sides of the tower there and one heel post. Now I've lined them up fairly precisely. There's five millimetre between the heel post and the edge of the tower on this side. Here we're 175 millimetres below. Now that allows me to drill the two holes that are going to mate on this through all pieces at once and that'll make sure that everything lines up exactly. The mating parts I want to be fairly exact. I don't want them to swap in them if possible. So this is the way I've chosen to do it. There's plenty of other ways to do it. I'll finish marking it up off camera and then I'll just explain what I've done. Okay, the holes are marked up. Uh, the holes that attach the tower to the heel post. Now on the tower they're marked as holes A1 and A3 and it's these two holes, these two marks here. I'll drill them all together. That should make sure I get a perfect mate on the tower to the heel post. And I've marked two holes here. That's just for my radius guide. This centre one, I'm going to put the post of the radius guide in, cut the radius around the outside and the hole through the middle. And I've marked another hole here. I'm going to put a quarter inch drill down it. And I've marked that so that the very edge of the drill comes up with the edge of the hole that I'm cutting out. That's just so the plasma cutter doesn't have to gouge its way through 16 millimetres of deal. It'll have a hole that can just get started on and go around. So I'll get the other one all marked up and then I'll get them drilled. Lining them up and just eyeing them across, make sure I haven't made any gross errors. They look pretty good. I'm pretty confident I measured everything three times before I marked it. So I'll go ahead and drill them now. Right, okay, everything's clamped together, all lined up, and I'm ready to drill the first of the two mating holes. I'll keep that bird's nest down a little bit, and it's too big. Through the first layer. It's actually easier to get them out one layer at a time than you're cutting multiple layers. And as you can see, the mark's dead centre in the plug that's cut out. 
I've mentioned it before in other videos, but I'll say it again. This bird's nest can be like razor wire, so don't grab hold of it unless you've got gloves on, is my advice. Because I haven't got enough up and down movement in this or this thickness of uh, job, I've actually got to pull the tools apart in order to get them in and out. A little bit of a nuisance, but not too bad really. Yeah, I'll turn the camera off, I won't bore you with that because it'll take me a few minutes. I'm sure glad I've been a better than you have it because filling a hole this size without one is a bit of a nightmare of changing drill sizes, moving the cable, realigning everything. So even though I've got to take the drill apart to get these in and out, it's all a lot easier than using normal drill. I've got two holes to drill to guide the radius, quarter inch holes for that, just a normal twist drill. I'll clean all this up and get them done off camera I think. The metal supply place that I went to didn't have a piece that was wide enough to cut this out entirely but it's only shy by 12 millimetres, about half an inch, just here where the curve of it is so I only need this really short little piece welded on there and I'll be able to cut it as per the plan. You know, you could say it's only half an inch, why don't you just leave it off? I just thought it looked better and I'm a hobbyist, I've got the time to do it properly. I'm going to do a full penetration weld down there, both sides. Grind it back and then when I cut it, it will look as though it was the same piece of metal. I think it looks neater, more symmetrical and just all around better. So, without further ado, I shall get my welding helmet on, turn on the machine and get to welding. Because I'm stingy, I'll start by using up this little bit of welding rod that's left. 7 18 rods, by the way. Again, exactly what I wanted, nice flat weld, ported up to the level of the surroundings. I can grind that flat down by the time I'm finished with it, you'll never know it's a separate piece of metal. I'll do the other one off camera, because the other one's the same and needs to be done as well. These are the four sides of the tower. I've tack welded this top pair together and I've tack welded the bottom pair together. I've lined them all up on the two holes that I drilled where they fit into the heel posts and then I've clamped all four of them together so I'm going to drill these other pair of holes through all of them at once again just to make sure everything's lined up perfectly now tolerances shouldn't need to be that tight but I always figure if you get the tolerances as tight as you can then it's going to work out in the end if you have a little bit on the tolerances, it can accumulate and end up being something that won't fit together without a bit of extra work. And I prefer to avoid that where possible. So anyway, let's get these holes drilled. Same story as before. Through a layer at a time, remove the plug and then keep going. Why would we lose power now? Right when I'm in the middle of a job. It would like a third world country where the power goes on north around here lately. Alright, well that's it, that's all the holes in the tower sides. Well, this is a keel post, I'm going to start plasmering it into shape now. I've got some guides here so I do a reasonably smooth cut. Got to come down there and out there and down here. That's the first lot of cuts. And there it is, it'll hammer it out quite easily. I've just got to shave up the top now and then matter of grinding him and welding him on. I 
It's trivial as hot as it seems. I am going to use a guide just to take that off at 90 degrees and I'll freehand break it. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I did think we'd wrap up the keel build in this video. But that hasn't turned out to be the case. There's a couple of things that I wanted to make sure that you saw. And it's taken more time than I expected. But I hope it's been clear everything that I've done. And I know this keel is specifically for a Mitsubishi D1550 tractor. But the techniques involved may help you in doing a keel for your own tractor. I hope it does. If you'd like to see more of my projects, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe. Until next time.